welcome to worship at St. Andrew's Church, Presbyterian Church in Marin City. I am so grateful and we are so grateful to have you here this morning. It is the beginning of a whole month that we will celebrate Black history. Our liturgist this morning will be Stephanie James Ellis. Our co-celebrant this morning is the Reverend Dr. Uh, Lori Garrett Cabina, who is also the immediate past interim pastor of the church. Our minister of music, whom you've just heard, and if you haven't heard her play, it, you're going to be really blessed by her, is the Reverend Carolyn Anderson, an unusually gifted and spirited uh, woman of God who can play and lead us into the presence of God. And I am grateful this morning to lead a liturgy for the service that is based on the writings of Howard Thurman. And we hope today that you will be blessed by this service and you will be blessed by our interactions and leave here the, in a different way than we came. We wanna, we, we have, uh, we began the service this morning uh, with something that uh, Lori Gary Cabina has brought to us, which is heart song. And this is a way in which we can center ourselves with the issues and the things of this week and to begin to get our minds and our hearts and our souls together with what we are thinking and praying about. So let us begin with the first heart song presentation that we will have, which is uh, from Stanford Choir. Activist James Weldon Johnson wrote the third voice and sing as a poem, which was set to music by his brother John Roseman Johnson in 1899. The song is now known as the Black National Anthem in America. It is a protest, a hymn, and a prayer of profound significance for our people. We lift every voice and sing to express ourselves. We lift every voice to show that we have strength in numbers and we will not be silent. We lift every voice and sing to be lifted, liberated, and free. Freedom, the power to determine action without restraint. Freedom, the absence of or release from ties, obligations, or restrictions. Freedom, the ease or facility of movement or action. Freedom, frankness or boldness in manner or speech. Freedom, a political right. Until we are all free, none of us is free. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Lift every voice and sing to Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to me light for my darkness open unto me courage for my fear open unto me hope for my despair open unto me peace for my turmoil open unto me joy for my sorrow open unto me strength for my weakness open unto me wisdom for my confusion Open unto me forgiveness for my sins. Open unto me love for my hates. Open unto me thyself for myself. Lord, Lord, open unto me. Amen. Now let us worship God in spirit and in truth. God, our creator, we are burdened with our recollections and we struggle beneath the weight of our memories. We seek how we may offer all to you in the quietness of our own inward parts, in the silence of this place. Brood over ourselves and our recollections with your spirit until at last there may grow up within us insight, wisdom, and new levels of sensitiveness that we may be redemptive in all that we do. Uh-oh. <laughs> this time of our worship, this day and beyond. Our cry to you, O God, is great. Amen. Good morning, friends everywhere. I want you to put a smile on your face. Put your hands together. Let's sing, we're marching in the light of God. <laughs> apologize these are the wrong words uh, Stephanie put in the wrong words but they are we are marching in the light of God we are marching in the light of God we are marching marching most of us know it let's sing it anyway <laughs>
I told you to be blessed, and now we are going to be doing uh, every Sunday during the Black History Month. We are actually having very. We're going to recognize some of the most amazing members of this community, and the first of which is Dr. Melba, Dr. What we, Dr. Melba, and there is a documentary that has been made on her, a uh, one of our young members, and we're going to look at that, and then hopefully be able to have her to say a few words also. Uh, so let's watch this movie and see and hear about this powerful woman. The Little Rock Nine were a group of nine high school students who integrated Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas in 1957. They became the first black students to attend an all white high school in Arkansas and to communicate to the primarily white discriminating crowd who wanted to keep their school segregated. The Little Rock Nine showed that they loved their education and that they would risk their lives to obtain it. They faced inequality and injustice, but they persevered through it all and changed the history of education for Black students all over the world. Ernest Green, Thelma Mothershed, Carlotta Walls Lanier, Elizabeth Eckford. Jefferson Thomas, Gloria Karlmark, Terrence Roberts, Minna Jean Brown Trickney, and Mella Beale. Those were all members of the Little Rock Nine. And the Little Rock Nine are all important. But today, I would like to talk to you about just one of them. Dr. Mella Patillo Beals was born on December 7th. 1941, the same day that Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Growing up in Arkansas, Dr. Beals was often curious about racism and why Blacks were treated so poorly. When Dr. Beals was just 15, she received a chance to attend Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. Central High was bigger than any of the Black schools and was high in the ranks of education. Dr. Beals signed the paperwork enabling her to go into Central High School. But little did she know how bad everything was going to be. White high schoolers that attended Central High threw eggs and food at the Little Rock Nine when they passed them in the hallway and while they were in class. They, tr they created hateful rhymes and messages that they sang out while they were passing Dr. Beals in the hallway. She attended Central High School for a year enduring the hateful classmates and the whites around her as they kicked her and they threw acid into her eyes. But Dr. Mel Beals had the help of someone far superior than the whites around her. Grandmother repeatedly said to me though, wherever you go, God goes with you. Mm -hmm. Touch your right cheek, God is as close as your skin. Yeah. And so he is enjoying this first day of school with you mm -hmm. and he will instruct you how to respond. Dr. Beals' grandmother was very important to her because she helped her get through tough times as a kid. One of her grandmother's favorite songs was, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. This song was sung because of the cruelty the Blacks had to go through at that time because of racism. At the end of the school year, Governor Fabus closed all of Arkansas schools to prevent integration. After being harassed for a couple of months out of school, Dr. Beals relocated to California because it was deemed unsafe for her to stay in that environment. She stayed with a white family until going to college in which she received a Bachelor of Arts degree and a Master's degree in journalism from San Francisco State University and Columbia University Graduate School of Journalism in New York. Even through great opposition, Dr. Beals went on to receive two doctorate degrees as well. Yeah. 
since then, Dr. Beale has written five books and received the Robert F. Kennedy Book Award. Four of the five books that she has written include March Forward Girl, White is a State of Mind, I Will Not Fear, and Warriors Don't Cry. Dr. Mebel Beals has three children and currently lives in Marin, Sonoma County and is even present today. She attended St. Andrew Church and now joins us virtually. Dr. Mebel Beals, we love you and we appreciate all that you have done and all that you are doing. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity to have such a legend in my church community and to see the world impacted by you, even now. Joelle did an incredible job talking about you as not only a, a, for, a forerunner, but also as a person who also is a forerunner of faith and history. And we thank you for all that you've done. And we wanna give you a chance to speak to us in this moment about what should we be doing now? Well, one of the things you have to have, in my case, I'm 79. And when I was uh, six, first 15, uh, I was born December 7th, 1941. So when I was first 15, going to Central High School, let me say to you that um, I had no idea that I would be on a walker or in a wheelchair marching with uh, Black Lives Matter. I thought that as a child, 16 and 15, I would go to Central High School <clears throat> and that would be that. They would see that I was God's child, that I was bright. I had a long ponytail. My saddle shoes were polished. <coughs> I have a little cough. Um, and I went to church and I thought, okay, cool. But it wasn't like that at all. So what I wanna say to you is, um, I have on my Instagram, John Lewis standing behind me and he's got his hands on my shoulders. And before, <coughs> I don't have anything. I just put something down my put on. Before he died, he's, we saw each other at an event about a year before he died. And he said, Melba, what are you doing in the wheelchair? And I said, well, brother, I had four spine surgeries. And he said, you better get your butt up out of that chair. He says, we ain't got no time for that chair. There is no time for resting. Get your butt busy, right? There's no time. What the hell's wrong with you? And he just told me off. So what I have to say to all of you is there is no time for resting. Biden is in. He's most, one of the most wonderful human beings on the planet. I didn't want him to become president in the beginning because he's too sweet to become president. And then the Lord Jesus said, I'm going to help you with this. I'm going to send your buddy Kamala. Well, let me say this about that. I don't know any 10 men with the strength of Kamala. And so we're good. He's backed up by the right lady. Only a black woman could handle that spot. A woman of Indian and black descent has everything she needs. And so uh, we are blessed at this moment, but let's not get comfortable. I, I sometimes give this speech around the country and it's called, who let the dogs out? We did. How did Trump become president? We let him. We were busy wearing our Jimmy Choo's and celebrating and being black folks who had arrived. And we looked the other way for five minutes and Mr. Trump got in. And so now <clears throat> what did I do during the last election? I tried to write at least a hundred letters a day. I didn't always do it, but I, but I set that goal. I worked uh, with people out of Georgia. I worked with various groups around the country. I tried to speak as much as I could on, um, Zoom, which I did accomplish that, but we have to stay busy. Uh, it has been a very long journey for all of us, but uh, as Martin Luther King said to me when I was a child, I was complaining. Martin Luther King would come over to see us and to tell us to, you know, and his first visit that he came, I did, I'd never met him before and I didn't know who he was and he stepped into the room and as everybody said, the room just went silent. There was like, uh, when he comes into a room, 
there's silence. And there's like, you know, even as a 16 year old child, when I first met him, I knew that he was uh, someone unlike my parents, someone unlike my minister. I knew that he was someone different. So he stepped into this room and he said, um, you know, what's up? And I knew to keep my big mouth shut. But first I said to him that I was sad and I was limping and everything. And he said, you know what? You're not doing this for yourself, Melva. You're doing this for generations yet unborn. And so we're, we have to keep working for those unborn as he did. I remember his, I have a dream speech. He said, um, I will not go to the top of the mountain with you. Basically he says, he says, I've seen the top of the mountain. You will see it, but I, I will not be with you on the other side. So he knew what was gonna happen if he continued doing what he was doing. He told us to begin with, yeah, you, you might die. That's cool. I mean, you might, but that can't be your goal. Your goal has to be what you're going to accomplish uh, and what you will do for generations yet unborn. And so it is important for us at this point to not be engaged in how things have been in 2020. Who could have guessed that it would be that awful? But I have to tell myself every day, get up. Uh, what are you going, what, what are your 10 things that you're grateful for today? And we are, we have lots to be grateful for each other. We have just finished an incredible period of time where it looks like we could see the light at the end of the tunnel. So my words are, it's just a long journey. There is no graduation. I remember telling my grandmother one time, I said, <clears throat> when's the graduation? And she said, what are you talking about? Because she would always tell me two things. You are a warrior on the battlefield for your Lord, which is, by the way, a hymn that Black folks sang when I was a child. And then another one was March Forward. She would always just say to me, I've named my latest book, March Forward. You got to march for it. I don't want to hear your complaints. There is no reason to complain. There's only reason to show me a list of what you're going to do. God is as close to you as your skin. Touch your sheep. God's right there. No problem. If you have a real problem, and if you ever need him, he will be there. And I have to say to you that in my lifetime, I have learned that to be true. I have lived a different life than most people I meet. I have been in a riot like you saw February 6th or January 6th. I've been there, been there, done that. I went to Central High School when there were thousands of people gathering outside, rioting every day. I have been standing in line waiting my turn to be hanged before. I've seen black folks, our folks hanging from a line, a baby. The thing that tore me up most was uh, my two year old neighbor hanging from a, a, a clothesline post in, my ba in the backyard next to me, okay. Uh, I've been there, done that. I watched them hang a man from my roof of my church as a child, five years of age, been there, done that. And so what I do know is that when I've needed God, when I thought I was really gonna hit it, particularly the time I was kidnapped, I thought, okay, that's it. And, and I would do it exactly what grandmother said. She would say, touch your cheek. Now, God is there. Never, 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 never has he failed me, including uh, the time I was in intensive care with my spine surgery gone wrong. Somebody did something they shouldn't have done. I always did exactly what she said. And I must say to you that God is there for each of you. I'm nothing special. God just is with us. He walks beside us. He holds our hand and he is willing to help us achieve what we want to achieve. But each day we have to stay aware of the fact. We have to remain aware of the fact that there is something expected of us because we are here and now. And we have to be the ones who lay the path for our kids. We are the ones that have to do what is good for the future. So it ain't easy, I gotta tell you, once again, I never thought I would be 79, talking about this, thinking about this, doing this, wondering about this. My neighbor moved out of my neighborhood three uh, three days ago. You know what she said? This is a neighbor who's never spoken to me. I lived here for a year and a half. She said, I'm moving because niggas have moved in my neighborhood. I'm moving because you are here. Now the woman cat corner across the street came over a few days after I'd moved in and said, listen, why are there white people visiting you?
right? They were literally like, when I came here from Arkansas, I was adopted by a white family. So every Christmas, 30 white people show up at my house, right? Their parents, the McCabe's, raised me from 16 forward. So that's my, that's my other family, right? So they came in for their Christmas dinner. The woman across the street said, who are you and who are all these people? And does that mean you're going to jail? On and on and on she went. She's never been back. So at least you think we've arrived anywhere. I'm here to tell you that why don't you go house hunting with me or job hunting with me or uh, any of the places that I fly or go sometimes, which are quite unwelcoming. And so we have to just stay with the program. Um, I hope there was a way out. I hope that we would all find total relief. I used to say, Grandma, it's going to be perfect. When I get to be a grown person, we're going to just have everything, be everything, and do everything. And she used to say, well, thank God that he's going to walk beside you because you do not get it yet, that it's not quite going to be that way. And so it's not that way, but it can be better for our children. So that's what I would have to say to you this morning is that what grandmother would tell you if she would hear it be to march forward, y'all. We have no choice but to march forward. We have no choice but to remain aware. We have no choice but to continue this battle. We celebrate Black History Month because we don't want to do that again. I very personally don't want to go to Central High School again. That would be nine months of absolute living hell. I do not want to need troops again. If you got to have the 101st Airborne escort you to school, you're in a lot of trouble, okay? And so I don't want that again, but if it comes, I'm willing to face it because inevitably I would say to you, march forward. So that's what I have to, that, that would be my brief and un, <laughs> uninitiated uh, surprise message today is just march forward and be grateful that we have so much more privilege. My grandmother walked every day to work, five miles, worked in white ladies kitchens as a maid and came home every evening through the snow. And, and after cleaning all day, 12 hours, cooked dinner, et cetera, she'd go to work at four in the morning. But she did that so that my mother could get her master's and her doctorate degree walked 10 miles a day to Philanna Smith College and got herself, what, her doctorate degree and taught. And my mother struggled, so I would come up. My mother wouldn't die. She honestly was in a coma for nine years and they kept calling me a little rock saying, your mother's dying today. She looked at me like I was crazy. And then she said, show me your degree. When she could come, come to light, she would speak French, fluid French, because she taught, she spoke six languages. And she would say one thing, show me your degree. And when I showed her my doctorate, when I showed her, it's okay, she died. And so what I say to you is show me what you got, pack it. Uh, <clears throat> if you are gonna make it for you and the children that will come behind us, show me what you got and keep marching, okay? So for Christ's sake, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for letting us be here and for letting us be together as a family and for letting us hear the love and the joy from each other and give us the strength to do as you have instructed, which is to march forward. So thank you. Amen. Put your hands together. Give a whoop and a wild praise wherever you are. <laughs> Give your heart, your hands. We, are, we celebrate you. We have one phone to pick with you. You said you were nothing special. Clearly, you are someone very special. And we thank you for sharing it with us. God bless you. And it's thank you here. for being here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's move on with as we continue to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth with the call confession, Stephanie James Ellis. Whatever may be the tensions and stresses of a particular day, there is always lurking close at hand the trailing beauty of forgotten joy or unremembered peace. God has come near in beauty, joy, and peace. Let us confess our sins. Forgive us, O oh God, for all that remains standing between you and us, the fears and the anxieties, the hatreds, the bitterness, the despair. Forgive us for all these. 
Forgive us for all the ways by which the creative flow of your mind and your spirit through us may be frustrated and held at bay. Tutor our spirits in the hope that is born of your love for us, that we may learn in some way that speaks to your to our condition, excuse me. With your love within us, we pray for your mercy. Amen. In spite of the feebleness of effort and great turmoil out of which we present ourselves to you, here and there a light comes or a voice is heard for which we give you thanks and praise, O oh God. We believe the good news. We are set free. Hallelujah. Amen. Here's another great moment to put a smile on your face and sing with a joy in your heart. He's done so much for me. Hallelujah. Can't tell it all. I love the Lord who heard my cry and pitied every groan. Long as I live and troubles rise, I'll hasten to God's throne. I love the Lord who heard my cry and chastened my grief away. Oh, let my heart no more despair while I have breath to pray. <laughs> First one is Acts 9 and 36 through 42. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About the time she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room, Lydda was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him, 
crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with him. Peter sent them out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa and many people believed in God. The second reading is from Matthew 26, 30 through 39. When they had sung a song, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told them, this very night, you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. And then Jesus went to the disciples to a place called Gesmane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. The reading is from Matthew 26, 36 through 9. This word comes from the mouth that breathes all life. Thanks be to God. I've had questions for tomorrow There have been times I didn't know right from wrong But in every situation My God promised me blessed consolation that trials come to only make me strong I've been to lots of places And I've seen many, many faces There's been times I felt so alone
a problem We just wouldn't know That God could solve them We never know What faith in our God could do So we sing together Through it all Oh, it's through it all We've learned Trust in God, it's through it all, everything in our lives, it's through it all, we've learned to depend upon God's word, trust in the Lord and never doubt, we've learned to depend upon God's word, I can do all than me we've learned we've learned oh today we've learned to depend upon God's word God's true word Amen and Amen Amen. We've learned to depend upon God's word. Again, I want to thank you for this, the first Sunday that I am be part of you. And it is a obviously an interesting time to enter into the history of this congregation on Black History Month. It is also a profoundly powerful moment to have had Dr. Melba Beals speak already, who is the embodiment of so much history so much power, so much pride, and so much that is the best of us. And there are those who would argue, why is the Christian church, or why is the church involved with thinking about history at all? Why do we have Black history in the church? In the church? And in fact, when we have this pushback against everything nowadays, everybody got an opinion online, very little truth, but a lot of opinion is going on online. People then wonder, why again do we do this? Well, I always ask, well, then you don't understand the nature of the church. That's one of the reasons we looked at Matthew and we looked at that passage. So you understand all of us, every human being has to walk through the corridor of life in order to move from time into eternity. And every one of us has but a few moments on this world, on this earth. And what is on the other side, we believe by faith is the resurrection and the life. But when someone leaves that, it doesn't matter whether they've gone a few days or whether they've lived a long life, it is left for those of us who are here to make sense of that life. Those of us who are here to remember that life and those of us who are here to call into question and make people understand the importance of life. We understand there's something in each of us that knows that life does, should not stop and cannot stop at the grave. We know that it is a terrible thing to forget someone. And it is a terrible thing to ask as if they are not here. Even look at Jesus in that passage when he looks at Peter and Peter says, I'll never disown you. Yet Jesus said, oh yeah, you will. <laughs> You're going to try to forget me. But that which I put into you is so important that you will remember. Everything we know about Jesus right now is because of the way in which Jesus was remembered and because someone told the story. And so history is in fact the bedrock of who we are as a people. It is who we are as a human being. It is who we are. And so that's why when someone dies, it is a particularly difficult time. And don't let anyone tell you to get over it or that it's easy or that why are you still grieving? Because it is not about grief. It is about reinterpreting and saying not how someone has died, but how will they live again in me? How will they be remembered? And how will they come again into this life? But this is why I looked and wanted us to look at this passage in Luke when Dorcas, she is, by the way, I love the passage 
because she is described and is considered as a woman disciple. Oh yes, there are those like that in the Bible. And she, if she dies, and when she dies, it is amazing that the people begin to interpret her and they, they call the prophet and they call him. And when he gets there, she, they hold up the clothing that she has made for them. And in fact, in the Greek, it's very interesting because the word is in the middle voice, which is to say, not just hold up clothing, but they held up the clothing that she made for them. As if to say, this woman who's died is significant because of what she did and how she weaved for us and we will never forget. This is why we remember, because people are weavers. We have all, and I like what Dr. Melba said and Dr. Melba Bill said, we're all born with a purpose. We're all given the reality of the threads of our lives and how we weave it is what we leave here. What we do with it is what is our history and our legacy. And the clothes that we wear, it's not that we just simply live, but that we live in a way that we create something for someone else. And it is a dangerous thing to forget a part of our history because it would leave us in an inappropriate wardrobe for our future. Imagine, 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 imagine what it's like when those people have done so many things to help us and prepare us for this day. Imagine the things that your mom and grandmother or people of significance in your life said to you. And I don't know about you, when I was a child, old folk were always saying something that because we were down south, we couldn't ask them what they mean. So they say something that I'd be thinking, I have no idea what you mean, but yes, ma'am, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. And it was 30 and 40 years later till I understood what they meant because they were always weaving for me a wardrobe, not of the present circumstances, but of what I would meet in the future. That's why it is a dangerous and regardlessly powerfully terrible thing when America or this country or anybody forgets their history, forgets people, and understand it is really important that we remember people who other people try to forget. They try to forget it because they try to, they, they don't want to recognize the clothes that they've woven for us are the clothes that are we needed because they don't want to even recognize the situations that they have made that we have to live through. I don't know anybody who would love to have gone through this last year without music. And quite frankly, I don't know of a whole lot of folk who of whatever color, whatever kind, didn't need a little jazz, didn't sing a little blues, and didn't understand even rapping because those were all things we needed to make it through. Can you imagine what it would be like to have forgotten all of those folks, to not remember all of the pioneers that did that? Can you imagine what the service would be like if Reverend Carolyn didn't have those songs to sing, to sing us into glory. Yet that's why we have Black History Month, to remind us of the significance of life and to put on the clothes of the past as we move to the future. So the Bible says that when the prophet came and, he's, and they held up all of the clothing, he looked at them and he was moved. This is also why we and you and I, when we're going through our times of grief, it's that we serve a God who is moved by not only our death, but our life. God is moved by what we do, what we say, and how we've used the gifts that God has given us. This, this next week in Bible study, we'll be looking at the parables of the, of the talents, and we're going to ask everybody, if you come to Bible study, to, agree, to at least bring one story of somebody that used their talent to teach us about race or love or kindness that changed our lives. Because it's the way you, lose, you use your life that gets you remembered. 
It's the way in which you stood in courage that gets you remembered. It's the way in which you love somebody that gets you remembered. These are the clothes that are irresistible. And he put them out of the room. And then the mystery of the resurrection happened. The reason I know that life does not end at the grave, the reason I know that we have a hope in tomorrow is because we have a glimpse of it by the grace of today. We have a glimpse of it by the kindness and the love and the peace that is supernatural that happens in our lives right now. And in the midst of that, we know that that kind of life will go on. And that is why Peter says, rise. And he rose again. So this month, we will remember all the many clothes that have been weaved for us, that have been woven for us in the history. We will remember all the things that have been said in this month, I remember the clothes that pray to your whole wind, woe for me. For when I was at Princeton, she was a major and a major influence on my life because while everybody told me about the men of the civil rights movement, I met Prathia and she told me about the women of the civil rights movement. And I'll never forget her or about Frank McCaskill who literally, 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 no one knows. But I met him when he was 60, he lived to 103. And the reason I will always remember Frank is because he always reminded me, regardless of what folk lie about what people couldn't do in the past, at 60 years old, he'd already 40 years accepted women in the ministry when everybody else was saying, old people were just of their generation. They like, no, that's a lie, they could have done something different. And so I wear those clothes because they wove for me not to accept what everybody's doing as a justification for what is all right to do. And Prathia, she wove for me the idea that I don't have to wait to the denomination accepted. I don't have to wait to everybody around me. I just have to do what's right and God will bless me as I do it. I don't know what clothes you're in. I don't know what history you're standing in the middle of. I don't know who God brought into your path, but this month, we're gonna hold up their wardrobes. And so I also think of the recent, the recent one who have died among us. He'd only had a few years, Mason, but Lord, he changed us, didn't he? and we will hold up his clothes and we will say, look what the Lord has done. Look what we must remember and look how we must move forward. In the name of the creator, redeemer and giver of life, we say amen. And these are the clothes of history, amen. Amen. Amen, amen.
Hallelujah. Amen. Beautiful. Now I'm going to ask you to get ready for communion. So you might want to grab your cup and your also cracker or bread. And we can't see what you use. So use oh, whatever sir. you feel. And an invitation to the Lord's table. And I want to give you this image, which is actually uh, the cross and the lynching tree. For And the, we must remember that the, for, for what we're about to celebrate, it is a sacrifice in the power of what God can do. Friends, this is a joyful feast of the this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at a table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, it is to, right give to give our thanks, thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, our creator. You have given us life and a second birth in your spirit. Once we Once were no people, 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 but now, now, now we are, we are your, your people. people. Someone's mic. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty. Blessed is Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. In love with you and in compassion, Jesus healed and taught, challenged and comforted, welcomed and saved. He formed the community. He formed a community promising to be with his disciples wherever two or three were gathered and sending them on his mission of hope and healing in the world. Jesus trusted his life to you and went freely to his death so that the world might be set free from suffering sin. You raised him from the dead and raised all us also to live a new life with him. In the power of the Holy Spirit, you send us out to make disciples as he commanded. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine for the gifts we have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Great is the mystery of Christ. Christ died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Now join me in saying the prayer that our Savior taught us as we boldly pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father and Mother in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil. Dr. Lori Garrett and Kabina. Let us pray. Holy God, pour out your spirit upon us. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts. Abide in us through this bread and cup. Fill us with the renewing power of the Holy Spirit so that when we leave this place, we will forever be changed. Amen. And the Lord on the night when he was arrested, he took bread and after he gave thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup saying, this cup is the covenant sealed by my blood 
shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. This bread that we break, it is participation in the body of Christ. And the cup from which we drink, it is in the blood of Christ. May this hospitality of Jesus Christ bless our journey, renewing us, strengthening us, and transforming us and empowering us in the continuation of Christ's way. This is bread from heaven for all who hunger for justice. Let us eat it together. This is the cup of compassion for a broken world. Let us drink together. picture that we have before you of taken last Monday at uh, St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, which is the food ministry. And God is really touching the lives of many people. And this is some of our great volunteers, many of whom did not want to be on camera. So they probably more people out to the side trying to run away from the pictures as those who are taking the picture. Uh, Sister Loretta was there. Uh, and it was an exciting time in what God is doing. So the ministry of the church is uh, very important for the city, and we want to ask that you would take the time to consider a donation to the church. Uh, either go over to our website at this moment and maybe um, and, and go over to this moment and to you know, make a PayPal donation or send it through snail mail. may take a little while to get here, but do a check. Uh, and uh, bless the people of God that way. So we thank you, and I'll try to get pictures. And if you have pictures of folks in action uh, going on in the action of St. Andrew's uh, Presbyterian Church in ministry of any kind of ministry, send them to me. And this time, I think I'll share the pictures. I do know that there are a lot of camera shy people in this congregation. So thank God I have an iPhone, and I'm going to get you so that we can tell you because uh, all the people who are doing amazing work in this congregation, it is a, a beloved community and we thank you for sharing and supporting the community. And so we ask you to give, go to the website, PayPal or send snail mail, God bless. Let's now say, uh, Stephanie, the affirmation of a congregational purpose. Yep, the spirit of the spirit Lord. The Lord anointing me to preach good news to the poor, sending me to proclaim release to the captives and the receiving of sight to the blind, 
to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Amen. And now in the name of the creator, redeemer, and giver of life, go forth and wear those fashions that have been created from generations past. Be the bold person in the room. Wear the colors of your past. Let your grandmothers, grandfathers, let those ancestors, let all who love the Lord and who loved you be shown in everything you do. And God will not only notice, God will bless you. And as Dr. Melva Beale say, touch, God is right here. And let those around you know, God is right here. Go in peace and serve the Lord.